You're listening to the Salty Sex Cast with Mariah and friends. Minimize the fear. Expand your awareness. Hello, you sexy souls. It's Mariah in studio with a friend who's not a new friend to me, but a new friend to the podcast on screen. But you've come to the podcast events. Yes, I have. And we have Cedric here. And he is a bartender, so that is why we have amazing drinks. Yes. Green they, drinks. Oh, they almost match the chairs, actually. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Podcast color drinks. Yeah. Oh, yes, I love it. That we worked. have to rename it to the Salty Six. <laughs> this That's, is the salty side of the Salty Six uh, cast. That straw almost matches the pink, too. Mm. Yes. There we go. There we go. So we'll be sipping on these all night because you can't have a bartender come to your podcast without drinks. Yes. So thank you. Thank you so much for bringing drinks. Um, so you, I met you through a friend who is in the lifestyle. And so kind of already knew you were introduced that knew you were part of the lifestyle. So it wasn't like a big surprise. It wasn't like, Hey, we're friends. And then like, feel like, Oh no, you're in this lifestyle. Are you going to be creepy or anything like that? So how I've treated you from the start has been how I would have treated you as a friend, right? Yes. But I'm sure you get different reactions. Well, the thing about, I don't know, I guess a lot of people that I meet and talk to in the lifestyle, especially new people, um, they just kind of have to get to know me. But mm-hmm. I kind I guess that goes with most anybody. Like if a new couple's meeting a new couple, they would have to meet one another so they can kind of get to know one another a little bit better. You got to kind of suss out the vibe. Yeah. So I would say that the best thing that works in my favor is that I make drinks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Li- liquid courage and lubrication. Just kind of make people at ease a little bit, you know, like you can and you and drinks bring people together. Yes. You start talking about it. You start talking about the drink, which what is this called originally? So this is actually called a sad peach. Okay. Um, it's supposed to be blue. I, it came out green this time, mm-hmm. which I'm not exactly sure why, but it still tastes good, so. I guess that's that's all I really because yeah, you're really in the studio, delicious. so it was it's, like I got a match. It's probably what yeah, it, it's probably what it was. <laughs> probably what it was. And uh, so you said sad peach, and I made the joke that it was the droopy butt, <laughs> <laughs> the droopy booty. Well, I was gonna say if it's sad if peach. it's supposed to be the sad peach, I was thinking soggy bottom. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there I like that. Soggy bottom. Mm-hmm. Salty bottom. Salty mm-hmm. bottom. I'm good with that. <laughs> no. So so I never thought about that, but so we met Cedric at the 100th episode party. And I never thought about it because you had people who brought food. Cedric did drinks. Mm -hmm. Of course, you had to take into account the kind of event that it was and find people who were willing to work that kind of event. I never thought about that. Yeah. 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 Like even our DJ, I was like, hey, this is what it is. Like it's a podcast party, but it's a sex podcast party. Just like making sure everyone was kind of cool to be around that vibe. Right. And so like with you um, talking to you about it. And um, came highly recommended, by the way, as a bartender. So I was really excited to get you booked. Um, But we came, a friend and I went over to your place. We tried drinks out. So we knew which drinks we wanted to pick for the podcast. And we were already chatting about um, the stigma and how you're treated slightly differently. And maybe not in a positive way, being a single male in the swinging lifestyle so for anyone who doesn't know what lifestyle means we'll get really pointed is that kind of what you um so the whole i guess i guess we'll go over the origin of how i got even <laughs> into the lifestyle. all right let's do it um because kind of got to start from the beginning so we can so we can get to that point um so i was separated from my from my ex she, I'm, I'm currently divorced now, but I separated from my ex and I had a friend. Uh, he hit me up. He's like, hey, man, you know, we do these things, me and my wife, and we do these particular things, go to these parties. So I'll take you to one. I was like, all right, because I was just sitting in the house just, you know. What a better way to get over a divorce or right. a separation. <laughs> yeah. And so I was just like, Ugh. <clears throat> so he takes me to a party. It's for Halloween. So. I've officially been in the lifestyle just over a year, two years, about a year. Time's weird lately. We've all COVID. lost a year. Yeah. 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 I get it. <laughs> I think it's two years. 
Um, Nope, two years. Yeah, it's two years. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I, I had to put it together. But he takes me to a Halloween party. We go there, and I'm like, all right, this is just a regular party. Like, it was kind of crazy, but nothing happened to make yeah. me go, ooh, this is a whole <laughs> lifestyle thing. And he realized that, too. So after the party was over, I was like, man, you know, I, I hung out for a while. It was cool, but I'm going to head home. He's like, don't worry, I'll get you to another party. And I was like, okay, cool. So Christmas comes, he's like, hey, this one guy's party, we're going to go to it, it goes crazy, you're going to love it. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we'll go see about that. He brings me in there, and I go in there, and this thing looks like eyes wide shut. I'm just like, (laughs) there is like, this is a porno scene, is what I'm looking at. (laughs) It was, there was sex happening in this room, in that room, in this room, and then I walk around the corner, and then there's a dungeon, and I was like... This is a legit dungeon. Like, I'm oh, here. This is like, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was um, just something outside of my realm of possibility that I would even be a part of. So, you know, I uh, I had a good time at that party. Um, started meeting some people and started doing some things. Well, in 2020, I, you know, separation happened. I moved in my own place. I realized I have an abundance of alcohol. I was like, what am I going to do with all this dog on alcohol? I have too much of it. And it all can't just taste like that all the time. It has to taste better at some point. So I started mixing up drinks just in my house. And then when I go to parties, I would mix drinks for people. So, uh, well, I would mix drinks for me and they would see me mix a drink and they would go, what's that? Let me like, yeah, yeah. Mm, that try fun. that one right <laughs> So I started making drinks and then I would give it to people and people would love it. So I just decided to bartend these parties as a way to kind of give back. Oh, so cool. that so that, you know, to be appreciative for being allowed in this community. You know, um just my whole being a single guy in the community, there's a huge stigma on the yeah. single guys. Yeah. And I had to, I didn't know this. I was just, they would invite me to the party. Everybody was like, all right, you, you look, you seem okay. So you could come in. And I was like, what, like, what's going on? And I would mm-hmm. talk to people and they would be like, well, this single guy did this thing. So we don't let him in. And this single guy did this thing. And this, and I was like, oh, wow. Was, these single dudes are not really just, they're just not. They're predatorial. Almost. Oh, they can be for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So that gave the bad name. Yes. To that. Okay. So, I decided to make it my, you know, small mission. I guess while being in this is like whenever I run into another single guy, you know, especially a new one, I try to talk to him, try to let him know, and I come to the conclusion that single guys don't know. That, that for they're, the most part, that they're coming across as creepy or. No, but they don't know how the lifestyle works. Mm. I didn't it, know about it when I was single. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We, uh, you know, as, if you're a single guy and you come into this, no one teaches you about it. Like the etiquette or how people may treat you like a predator or a possible predator. And so then you're just kind of like, why am I being shunned or treated differently than this guy walking in with a lady on his arm, Mm -hmm. very different conversation, probably very different. Um, even like a welcoming type behavior. So you've noticed that. What was that? Sorry. I was going to say, we've, we've talked about it before where like, you know, I'll be at a restaurant with Jamie and I might flirt a little with the waitress and she'll like be more receptive to it because I have Jamie there. She's like vouching that. Okay. This guy's safe. Yeah. Yeah. He's, so, a, he's at least worth sitting down and having a meal with, right? Uh-huh. So, uh, and, and then walking into uh, an environment that's charged around sex, people probably make assumptions that, like, either the guy's predatorial or there's a reason why he's single or da 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 Well, mm. well what <laughs> I would say is that most single guys aren't necessarily predatorial. They just assume. No, that's the name that they get before someone even well, yeah, gets yeah, to know them. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I'm saying is the reason why they get that name and have that stigma is because they walk into a sex place, they see sex happening, they assume that it's okay to have sex because that's gotcha. just that's what they see and that's what 
that's what everybody's doing. So they say, oh, well, this is how it is. Then this is what I would do. Um, They're not aware of the process leading up to the consent, the conversation, Mm -hmm. the just getting to know people. They just think it's drop your pants. It's a whole party. Yes. Gotcha. Because if, if you if you are a single guy and you walk into that world and you see basically a porno set where things are going on and no one tells you, hey, you need to do this. You need this rule. You need this rule. They just say, all right, well, I'm going to participate as well. Mm. Right. So I, I think that a good amount of them don't know the rules. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say it's a, it's a lot of navigate. And that's a question we probably get quite often. How do you go explore if you want to open your relationship up? And there are things like swinging parties, lifestyle parties. There's meet and greet parties where it could be like at a bar or somewhere public where it's just like we have a thing in common, but we're not doing that thing here. Mm -hmm. We're all just getting to know each other. We're all just kind of hanging out. Then you have the private parties, like a house party with a dungeon, et cetera. (laughs) Sometimes they're called kink parties. Sometimes, you know, there's a few other names that I've heard too. This drink is really strong, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) I'm already feeling a little hit You haven't even, like, made through any of it. I I know. My ice is melting, so that's why I have more liquid. Oh, okay. I don't think that's how that works. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm just trying to make excuses. Well, like, I mean, the funny thing is, is like I'm in the lifestyle. Jamie and I participate in extracurricular activities. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I have zero idea how I would operate if I was single at a sex party or uh, at a lifestyle. lifestyle party, kink party or whatever. I, I wouldn't know yeah. how to behave without having a conversation with somebody there. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I, okay, so I guess I look at things in a certain way. Um, I would consider myself calibrated. Okay. And I use that term to say that I understand how to treat people. Mm. That just goes back to social nuances of that. Well, that goes back to my, my childhood and everything like that. From the age of eight, all the way up until ninth grade, I was in a different school every year. So Mm -hmm. I couldn't, you had to relearn how to socialize in a lot of different cultures. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went from the age of eight, we moved from New Orleans. I moved from New Orleans to Iowa. So that was That's a totally a huge different change. <laughs> that was a totally yeah. different change. And then from in my formative years, going from 12 all the way up until now, well, from 12, I, we moved back to New Orleans, which was a huge change back because mm-hmm. the world was different from eight years old to 12 years old. Oh, yeah. Like school is completely different from those mm-hmm. from those ages. And so um, I figured out and then, you know, I was also in the military. So um, I figured out how to be calibrated around people. And what I mean by that, um, around that term is I understand how to observe and treat people, um, in a respectful way. So that way you can learn things. So when you go into an environment, uh, swing party, LS party, whatever you go in that type of environment, um, especially being a single guy, what you need to do is you have to like, observe the situation first yeah you pick up the social nuances you watch other people you're kind of like all right you don't just jump in (laughs) feet first to that i know and i i find that strange that so okay i'll give you for instance when i was at the party the the second party not the first one the second party the dungeon party we'll call it (laughs) i just kind of like walked around say hello to people um just spoke spoke to people just be a decent human being yeah and then while all that stuff was happening you know you just have to control yourself and then just let things flow and eventually you get brought in because it's like oh okay you, you're kind of cool you're not trying to rush you're anything pushy. you're not pushy mm-hmm. and then they'll bring you in and then after that is when they i started getting more of the rules of how it goes yeah And I'd say, like, from lifestyle group to lifestyle group, there can be different nuances, social nuances and and rules. Like, a Utah lifestyle party may look a little bit different from, like, a New York lifestyle party. There's just different social things, cultural things, too, that people pick up on. So... Plus, there's Taking. a difference between a party that has a dungeon and a party that doesn't have a dungeon. Very true. In the same very neighborhood. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, well, that's yeah. Very true. And just it, 
it goes a long way to sit back, observe, get curious, talk to people, just get comfortable. I mean, I want to go to so many of those experiences just to learn about it, not to really even participate, right? Like, it's just, it's so fascinating to learn about these different cultures and how it is. It's a lot of unsaid rules. No one's like handing you a rule book. Like, this is how you go navigate these things. Um, And I say, like, I would say a lot of people have maybe built up what they think the lifestyle should be in their head. And then that could be very different, too, from actual reality, too. It's not like we're all putting our names in a bucket and pulling out, right? Like, that is, I think, a... (laughs) That's, like, in the 70s. Movies. (laughs) Key party. Key key party. party, That's it. (laughs) Right? And so I think... If you haven't experienced one, it's just good to ask questions and get curious, too, because it could be very different. Is it a key party? Is it an invite only? Is it a cuckolding party, too, where, like... I like only, how you said that one like you were embarrassed to say I was like, hold on. I had to question myself. And I was like, am I saying the right word? Because I don't use it verbally very often, uh, right? <laughs> a cuckolding party. I've not heard of that as a party, but... If they have that, I guess. There's a party for everything. There's a kink for everything. And so, you know, when someone says lifestyle, is a lifestyle one layer and then a kink another layer? So lifestyle plus dungeon, lifestyle plus BDSM, like, you know, and so you have I've, to kind of I've navigate. Seen quite a bit of those at. Right. Yeah, a party called lifestyle and then a whole bunch of other stuff happens at, at those parties. Because, I mean, the, the kink in the swinger community are, are mixed and when you get to lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. Well, and and you talk to anybody with uh, in the BDSM community, it's it's very consensual and like well thought out and prepared things. And so when you show up at a lifestyle party very that has respectful. that, respectful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think what happens is when you have that dynamic from the kink community and they mesh with the swinger community, those aspects of uh, consensual and things like that bleeds into it. Mm-hmm. So. The, along the path of learning the rules of it, that was certain some of the things that I learned. Like, oh, consent is is key. You have to make sure you get consent from <clears throat> whomever. And not only that, and one of the biggest things that I think single guys often forget is that you're not dealing with a sing, like a female just by herself. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with a couple. Mm-hmm. So you Most have to time, look yeah. at the two people as one, not just her. Yeah. Right. So that's that's happened a lot to me and Jamie where we've been on apps and we've been approached by guys and the guys are basically try to immediately bypass you, bypass me and or like, well, you could watch or whatever. And it was like, dude, <laughs> yeah. Or like, I'll give it to her so good. And I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to hire a replacement here. What are you talking about? <laughs> so but that, that's, unmatch. That's, a, that's, a, that's what I'm saying, though. That's something yeah. that's that's not calibrated properly enough yeah. with people because you have to go, OK, um. Well, I I look at every couple that are, that as a as one being, okay. If I want to talk to the, to the girl from the couple, I I will speak to her, but I will make sure to say you know, hey, like is is he okay with this? Are we sure? Should I should I meet him? Most mm-hmm. of the time, I actually go meet that guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. you I know think what that's I mean. A very normal so, part. so that way I can say you know, hello, how you doing? You know what I mean? Not just straight jump your lady's bones you know what i mean yeah i mean that has happened to me at a few parties where <laughs> she came to me so and i yeah. think sometimes that's a couple's understanding too hey we're at this party you're free to roam will you leave with me there's some couples that have that type of understanding mm-hmm. there's others that are like no i would like to meet that person it's a respect thing it's a um or i want to join i want to be involved i want to be there i want to be present i want to be next to you maybe with another person or whatever it is there's so many ways like it's a huge spectrum and so to how one person you interact is not going to be the same how you interact with another person so i think that's where like the curiosity and just respect comes in right so the way that uh the way that i've seen it's the best way to navigate is to make sure you understand the rules of the couple first. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, yeah. I, I do want to play with you. I think you're beautiful, whatever. But I need to know what your situation is, what your rules are. So that way, you know, we stay within the bounds of that. Because my goal as 
as a single guy in here is to have fun, but it's also to make sure I don't cause it a, a rift in mm. anyone's relationship because that's not what that's not what I'm here for. Sure. I'm here to I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to have some drinks with some people. If we play, we play cool. But like, it's not to be, oh, um, I, I, I'm destroying your relationship. Yeah, because that's not that's not. I don't want that for anybody. Certainly. I want people to have their relationship, come in, have fun. If they choose me to be a part of that, I appreciate it. I thank them for that, um, for for being allowed that privilege. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, and when I leave that, I don't want them to be angry and then mad at me even. You know what I mean? Because yeah. yeah. along with the stigmas with the single guy, it doesn't take much for the single guy to be outcasted either. Yeah, yeah. Now, now you're no longer invited, right? One one faux pas could get you kicked out versus a couple who have maybe been in it longer or, um, and dare I say, really attractive people sometimes get away with that. Like the pretty True. privilege, I think they could probably get away with more. And so call people out, you know, just be, again, respectful. And, um, and there is a thing of like, too much to drink, you know, which I really appreciate because you and I had this conversation for the podcast party. You knew how to watch people around. You knew how many times you served that person. You knew how much you were pouring. You were like, you know, I kind of start the night off a little bit lighter, maybe get a little heavier towards the night. Like when we want to like pump it up a little bit more. I love that because it shows me that you're very responsible for others too. And so you're not there bringing the drinks to get a bunch of people drunk to take advantage. Like, no, no. No, not at all. But that could be something that someone could use if they were a predatorial mm -hmm. type. And so I could see someone being like, hold on. Let's, I got to, you know, fill you out. Who are you? What's your MO? Like, what, a, you know, where are you coming from? What's your goal kind of thing? Once you start talking to you, it's like such a respectful, kind guy. But I could see from surface level. Some people could put up a wall immediately. So that was one of the things about when making drinks that I do that I realized. Um, most people who go to parties and, and they make drinks, everybody brings their alcohol, right? And people just grab a bottle, they pour 75% alcohol, 2% uh, Sprite, and then be like, oh, that's <laughs> delicious. No, it's not. Your face tells me otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> that but was me on Halloween. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, I was dumb on Halloween, let me tell you. <laughs> so I what, saw. What I, <laughs> what I decided to do, though, uh, what I what I understood was that if I measure the drinks, people can get buzzed and I can keep people at a buzz level yeah. all night as opposed to them getting sloshed and hammered. And then they can't. You know what I mean? You can't. You can't give consent. consent. Yeah. You, you can't. And, and the fun is no longer there. Mm -hmm. No one wants a sloppy, gross sex or like to then have regrets too it ruins the whole vibe for the whole for everyone and you don't want that at a party in particular no, yeah because it could it'll kill a party if you know a guy's like sloppy drunk or do or a woman's sloppy drunk it'll it could destroy the whole party but if you make drinks evenly you make them taste good people get a nice little buzz off of it i mean you can give them a shot or two of it if you know if they're not too bad but you don't want people to just be spinning out of their mind yeah trying to party mm -hmm. so I started bartending. I got my bartending license and things like that. And I said, look, I will bartend these parties for you. So that way you have someone who's watching the alcohol. In a responsible, educated way. Yes. Yeah. So Because we've had, uh, we, we've we've been at parties back and forth at, at each other's houses, me and Mariah. And, and uh, we've had friends get a little out of control. Shot pusher. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but in, in becoming out of control, they then make a situation uncomfortable. And then there's a question as to whether or not they're invited to the next party. Yeah. Yeah. Or, there's a couple of the, you know, where we've had situations and we're like, man, they're so cool until they start drinking heavy. Until they cross that line. That, that person mm -hmm. you don't want there because it ruins the vibe for everyone. Exactly. Right? But if you have somebody there who can bartend and watch the drinks, they can come back like, hey, man, what kind of drink you got? I like, got this. Oh, I just like whiskey and Coke. Okay. Especially well, then I can give you a fun. shot yeah. or a shot and a half of whiskey. And then the rest Coke, which is a properly made drink. So that way you're not, you don't get that situation. Completely mm -hmm. blitzed and, and out then, of control. And, and then when I do shots, because I, I mix shots a lot. You do, yeah. So when I make Play shots and shot. mix them, you know, it's 
you're not just getting 300% alcohol yeah. in the shot. It's mixed with other things. And so it, so you get the shot. It tastes good. Everybody's happy. Everybody cheers. Yeah. And what then I, they what go I, back out and party. What I do love about your shot pusher, though, is that... Uh, <laughs> it's out of frame. He, he, he's at least very consensual about it. If I say, no, nah, I'm good on this one, he yeah. doesn't force it on me. Like, he's I've, just I've the had one that who in the calls past. for it, and then you're <laughs> like, I want to be a part of that party. Yep. And then you're like, I can't run with that party because that party is three times my size. <laughs> um, no, I, I love that. I love that approach to just kind of being aware of the social situation and taking control so everyone has fun, not taking control so then you take someone else's freedom away. Yes. Like you're almost giving more of it there. But well, flipping. But I, I, I've, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. I, I've found that if you ha- give everybody fun, yeah. Then you get fun in return. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're going to be it's like, oh my simple. God, it's the <laughs> drink guy. It's yeah. Very, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's excited when you show up. Yeah, they're like, oh, the, yeah. like, oh, the bartender's here. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I've been waiting for a soggy bottom. <laughs> <laughs> salty bottom. Salty. It's salty bottom. No, Sorry. just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like a salty green lake or something. I don't know. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, but. Flipping to the other side, being a single female in the lifestyle typically gets the name. Like it's it's so wanted in the, that the type unicorn, of group. Unicorn, infamous the unicorn. unicorn that it has a name. Yeah, unicorn. Yeah. People want that unicorn because, like, oh, you don't have that attachment that I have to go ask permission for. And I hate that. That's how it looks like from the outside looking in sure but it's not like when you actually meet those single women and who own the name like there is a whole unicorn group facebook yeah. group and everybody and they've come to those parties that i've been to the meet and greets at least and um you know that it's very much they're aware they take care of each other everyone else you know it's not this um object to be passed around mm-hmm. i should say or this um, thing to win over either you know what's funny about that um i'm you know i've been in it for a little bit so a lot of the single women and the unicorns are saying i don't like to feel that way i don't want to be the object mm-hmm. yeah no around. they don't and well it's, like it's that. funny that you say that because i've been on and off apps and, and deleted and 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 rejoined and and then i'm uh, participating in reddit and you know reddit works like a thread so if you know your posts disappear uh or they sink to the bottom anyways but uh the thing that i notice is i'll see the same couples over and over again making the same mistakes when and they're like ah, they're unicorns they're impossible to find and i'm like no man no. actually you no, can they're out there when yeah. you're hunting a unicorn if you've heard of unicorn hunting mm-hmm. yes. that is the thing you've objectified that person right you have not thought of their needs their wants they're going to have to like both of you. Yeah. You know, not mm-hmm. just one of you and to be okay with it. So it's very, it's really fascinating. And it doesn't mean that people should be discouraged if that is a fantasy or if they're bisexual and they really want to have a third in there. Um, it is just something, again, to be socially aware of. Outside looking in, you think it's one thing. Yep. It's very different once you're actually acclimated. I love that word. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, I always said this. That the true unicorns is a single, respectful male. Oh, okay. Tell us more. So much so. They're that, more rare, huh? Yeah. So I said, mm-hmm. because we're so rare, we're not even unicorns. We're actually legendary Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love like, it. Like, we've gone to a whole nother level because there's so few. Gotta catch them all. <laughs> okay, sorry. Do, do you play Pokemon Go? Uh, I don't, I've played it, but... Um, I uh, I don't currently play. Oh, okay. okay. I play a Dino. I I play a Jurassic Park version. I, I play of, that a little bit. Yeah. So I was I, just gonna say, if you do play Pokemon Go, and before you leave, add me as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but so I, I looked at it that way because I'm like, that is such a rarity. Yeah. In in this community, that we're above unicorns. You know, and I know there. And it's weird because, like, the single respectful dudes, like, we kind of know each other because mm-hmm. we're always at the same parties. You know, yeah. it's like because you get an invite. <laughs> this, yeah. It's like four because of us at the same parties. Because you continually get an invite. Yeah. I'll say because you continue yeah. to be respectful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, um, speaking to the unicorns and all that stuff, they said they don't like parties where 
single males are not allowed or invited because mm. they say, well, then that puts the ratio specifically couples and just single females. Yeah. yeah and say, we would like the opportunity maybe to find a single male because who knows? Maybe we find a single male. Maybe we vibe together. Maybe we then become a couple. Yeah. Well, and Jamie's, Jamie's talked about it too before where she goes through phases where she's into girls and then she's not. And then she's into girls and then she's not. And we call it her bicycle. <laughs> and uh, so I always ask her where she's riding her bicycle, right? Oh, my God, that's great. And uh, uh, so if her and I were to participate in parties like that, like we might show up and be like, dude, I don't want a unicorn. You know, she mm-hmm. might not want a unicorn. So that might be the thing for that evening or whatever. So mm-hmm. I could I could totally see that. And I could see with a, a girl who identifies as a, as a unicorn saying, yeah, I'm not, I'm not necessarily digging a couple right now. I'd like to meet a guy or maybe a single girl or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the way I would say to do it, you know, don't nix all single dudes, maybe put a cap, you know, if you're having a party, you want to have more, uh, uh, couples and unicorns there, allow it, but then, captain like all right we'll we'll allow 15 single dudes in there yeah. just so 15 it, that's a big party uh, i don't i don't know what size the party is. oh okay <laughs> I, I, I was just throwing just, out a number oh, okay i got you i got you i was like man how many couples you got for 15 single dudes and then i'm <laughs> but, spattering of unicorns you guys ran would, out of hotel what's going on here yeah, possibly yeah but <laughs> <laughs> but i figure you just sprinkle some in there so that way and i mean of course you find some good single dudes you know what i mean i'm not saying you know, just let anybody in, but sure. like find some good single dudes. Yeah. But I, I would say, what is needed in order so you can have good single dude is maybe like a single dude class or a single dude course. Single dude education. Yeah. yeah. Like, are you gonna be a single dude? You gotta take this class. Yeah. You, you take Got the consent. The Cedric stamp of approval. They're gonna, they're gonna send oh, Cedric. Am I, am I the, <laughs> you're, 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 I'm, I'm assuming you're the adjunct professor. Oh, I'm the professor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Professor Winchester, that's fine. I don't care. Oh, that, do dude, that's classy as fuck on a business card. Professor Winchester? Yeah, Professor yeah. Winchester, Winchester. Hell ha- yeah. House of Mixology. That'll Hell yeah. Me. Mixology, I love it. <laughs> oh, too fun. I'd buy that book. Oh. If I walked by that on an end cap at the Barnes & Noble, I'd be like, Professor Winchester? <laughs> oh, shit. How to navigate the lifestyle as a single male. Yeah. And, and Digging it. appropriately alcohol your people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> appropriately. Appropriately. <laughs> Not too much, not too little. Make it fun. Well, it's it, I, I like at the end of the night when you came to the the party. I mean, I was because I remember, I remember thinking like as I was watching you pour drinks at the beginning of the party, I was like, all right, we're taking it easy. I'm cool with that. I don't really like getting drunk. I like a good buzz. I'm cool with this. And then you let me make my own, and you were like, yeah, go ahead, get fucked up. It's the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, because when it comes to a certain point. Um, you know, the bartender has to stop bartending and then Yeah, you wanna enjoy your time yeah, I too. Get out mm-hmm. there and have some fun too. Um so I do however, people are usually good and nice and drunk before I do that. And then they don't necessarily make their own drinks. At that point, it was just like, Hey man, if you wanna go if for you that, have go to for have it. a drink and then it's over there. There's well, I always specifically the, asked him to show me. Yeah. Um, there's always the thing though, right? So whenever that person goes to make a drink that I didn't make, they go, oh, God, this is horrible. Can you please help me make this drink? And then I said, all right, I'll you with that drink. He kind of so, he kind of eyeballed me for a minute and then was like, I got like the head turn of like, oh, God, <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Your two second pour yep. was 10 seconds, my friend. Yeah, he kept counting. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, like a thousand one, four. no, thousand no, two. One, he's two, like, no, it's one, four. two, three. Yeah, I was like, oh, my bad, man. I thought we were doing one Mississippi. <laughs> What but alligator? To be did? fair, that was the last drink I needed for the night. I was good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a good party. It was for the Salty Sex Cast 100th episode. It was awesome. Yeah, it was so, a lot of fun. That was, that was over the summer, the beginning of the summer. Mm-hmm. Like, still spring. It was still kind of chilly. It was still kind of chilly. Which yep. was great because, like, the mosquitoes out weren't too bad. We had just had a bunch of rain, so it was nice and clear. Had a nice mm-hmm. fire out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, was a good, good vibe. Yeah. It was fun. Super yep, it was fun. awesome, and yeah. we met we met some really cool. Uh, I'm assuming they were patrons, weren't they? Fans of the show. Were they just fans of the show? Mm-hmm. Or were they patrons? Okay, so anyone curious about becoming a patron could go to patreon.com forward forward slash salty sex cast. Is that right? You got yeah. it. Ooh, is that what you guys get like super spicy? 
there's that, some, there's that, some that, bonus content stuff yeah, on there. Yeah, there's bonus right. content. We have mm-hmm. a bi-monthly Q&A, live Q&A that we get on Zoom and chat with them. So it's just like a monthly subscription starting at $5 a month. And yeah. so it's fun. So we have a couple of folks who've just been amazing to financially back our podcast, which really just helps us get the message out to more people. Um, it's definitely not something we pocket. Like it's yeah, our mission it's, is too important to us. Like yeah. this is not a money maker, right? Yeah, no, that, that, that's so, fine. but um, there's some cool little after hours episodes on there where there, we yeah. they're like there's really kind of stuff. in depth episodes about us and our partners and oh okay yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a huge announcement for the podcast. Well, not like announcement, but a milestone that's really exciting. <gasps> oh, that's right. We got. What do you think it is, Brady? It was, uh, well, I think the one you're about to say is uh, the downloads you sent me. 50,000? 50,000 downloads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we got to 100, or 100,000, huh? That would be great. 100 downloads? When we got to 10,000 downloads, that was really exciting. Yeah. Right? Like, that was just like a fun milestone. Like, you know you're actually, like, producing something that people are listening to. It's Mm -hmm. not just us chatting with ourselves, which is fine. I still enjoy us chatting with ourselves, right? But thanks for our mid-roll um break for the podcast content <laughs> thought i'd good. slip it in there because i one of the things That's we it. slip it in brady <laughs> slip away <laughs> now that you're lubed up I, with your uh, salty that. bottom my salty bottom um <laughs> ha- have you watched uh death proof the quentin tarantino movie do you like quentin tarantino yeah i think i watched that so i get a kick ago. out of it because stuntman mike's in the bar and quentin tarantino's a bartender and he's making drinks and Quentin Tarantino or uh, Stuntman Mike is drinking virgin drinks. And the girl that he's talking to is, is like, she's like, let me get this straight. You've sat in a bar for several hours drinking water. For what? And he's like, well, alcohol is a, is a wonderful lubricant. Uh, or, or a bar is a great place for a, a ton of different interactions and da, 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 da. And alcohol is just a lubricant that makes that possible. And then he had his reason for being sober. I can't remember what it was, but I love the idea of alcohol being a lubricant because it was yeah, it was a genius line. It gathers people. Mm-hmm. It is kind of like the social thing, right? I mean, you're at the bar waiting for a drink. You're watching someone. They could be chatting with you. They could be chatting with someone they're waiting you know, with. It's just like a fun thing to get to know people instead of like feeling like a wallflower. Mm-hmm. Who do I talk to? Where do I go? Where do I look? Well, <laughs> like, it's a little liquid courage. You're more willing to walk up to a stranger and be like, tell me about what you did today. And, the, and, and then they're, and they're better more brave to do it. When you have a drink in your hand, because you feel like that's what you're going to do. Like, okay, I have a goal have a in mind. I have a task. Yeah. Right? Instead of like, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'd say this because most parties start... With like, like people get in, they're sitting on the wall. That I need a drink first. You know what I mean? Before they can actually like interact with uh, with with people. So, um, that that's part of the reason why I do it. You know, yeah. I, I make the drinks for that, so that way people can, you know, get going, get a little more. Well, it's a great it's a great tool too because if you find yourself in a conversation you don't want to be in, you can always be like, oh, I gotta go top off my drink. Be right back. Yeah, I gotta go get another one. And then just oh, never yeah. come back. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go get your drink and then carry on with the night. Yeah. Half the time, that's, the, that's a good thing and a bad thing because, like, sometimes you want to continue the conversation. You do want to get another drink. And then you leave. Oh, I bring them with just me. Like, Come people stand are in just, line with me. Yeah, people gonna... are just pulling at you like, oh. oh, hey, I didn't see you here. And next thing you know, you don't never get back to that. Mariah will turn them into a luggage porter. Come here. Hold these extra drinks I'm going to buy for, for everyone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> She'll put you to work. Mm-hmm. Right, well, that's how you keep the conversation going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's when you get really good at what you do, you can hold a conversation while you're pouring drinks, right? Mm-hmm. Like for me, I'd be like too much going on. Like, oh no, I want to be social and, and also do the task at hand. It's like mixing drinks. So I would probably have some anxiety doing that at first, but you're at the point. It sounds like it well, works. I would say that's probably the best part about being the bartender. Everybody comes talk to you. Like yeah. you, you. Oh, you get to meet everybody. Yeah, I meet yeah. everybody because the guy is pouring the, the, the drinks or the shot or whatever. And so That's I have awesome. to be able to pour so and interact smart. with people. If you want to be the... I'm starting to think I should probably get my liquor license. <laughs> yeah. Your liquor license or your bartender license? I could... 
liquor could, license. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. My bartending license. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you get a liquor license, that means you can open it up at a bar, and then you'll here, have a bartender here in the studio. We're gonna just have a... the Murder Shack Saloon. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Have a drink I'm, with the goat. I'm gonna have the ver- I'm gonna have the first. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna have a the first bar in Hooper with goats. Oh, <laughs> Hooper. Sorry. I was like, you just called it Hooper. Yeah, it Are you even I'm a, from? I here? am a transplant. Okay. So. I don't know if you can claim that if you've been here for more than 10 years. Oh, <sighs> shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I know a, I'm a transplant, but like, if I can't claim that, I don't know. I met my, my neighbor, he came over to introduce himself, and I had just been startled by a gunshot because we're out in the middle of nowhere. And there's People a guy, shoot guns. Yeah, there's they a guy sh- down the street shoot shoots his gun like three times a week. And uh, so, like, my first day moving in, uh, I had like walked to the very back corner of the yard and I was going to walk the entire, I was just really proud to have my first house. And, uh, so I hear this gunshot and I was still in the army at the time too. So there was a little bit of panic induced and I was like, Oh, like duck down. In the like weeds. I need to do something. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, so then I like turn around and start hoofing it back to the house. Cause I was like, man, maybe like that shot could have been possibly like, what's that guy doing out in that field? No one lives yeah. there. <laughs> and so I turned around and head back for the house and I bump it. My neighbor had seen me arrive. And, and so he came walking out and, uh, and uh, he greeted me, and I was like, yeah, man, I'd never heard of Hooper before. Uh, I bought the house. And he goes, first off, it's Hooper. <laughs> like hooker. Like hooker with a P. And I was, and I wanted to argue because I was going to be like, well, if it was, if you put a C on the front, it'd be Cooper. But okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, my God. Stop. But I didn't argue. But, uh, yeah, no. And that's, so, yeah, we're going to have well, to I mean, open. That's no different than what, Tooele, right? Yeah, oh, Tooley. Yeah, no, I, when I came in, when I first saw that, I was like, "That's Tuli," and they was like, "Tuwilla." I'm like, "I'm sorry, where do you get <laughs> a W at in that <laughs> spelling?" How do you pronounce mountain? Mountain. Okay. Yeah. See, there's the T. Yes. Okay. I so you're still tramps, trans, tramps, tramps. <laughs> oh man, Transplant. you're a tramp lamp. <laughs> I don't know what I'm. Tra- I promise. That wasn't a nomic aphasia. I think no, that was that soggy was just... bottom. <laughs> 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 I did, I, I, maybe I put too much in that one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're there's, all measured the same. But that's why like, there's another green. one on the desk that's unclaimed. I'm kind of <laughs> waiting to see if me or Justin go after it. Oh, I'm, it's, it's, I'm getting the green light. Uh, it's <laughs> I, and you also have a shirt that says saloon. So that just makes oh, it all good. Yeah. So we're going to open the Murder Shack Saloons. The Murder first Shack goat bar in Hooper. Hooper. Goat bar. Oh, my God. I love it. Hooper. Uh, mm. Bringing us back to the conversation. Yeah. No, so I'm waiting so, for the spicy questions because usually, like, you all like. I was just gonna what, get there. What is off limits? I'm like, oh, oh we got so time. far. This has been yeah. pretty cool, so I don't know. What have you learned about yourself? I'm gonna I'm gonna start us off a little easier before I go too spicy too quick. But what have you learned about yourself being in the lifestyle? Um, that's a very interesting question. I don't, what what I've learned about myself is, like I said earlier, being calibrated. I'm a calibrated human being and I can be around other human beings without pissing them off too much. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) I I, I can, I can, I can go into most any environment and, and work my way through that environment without issue. Sure. Um, And I don't know if I learned that necessarily by lifestyle. I knew that when I was in the military too, but I, I think that it, shows more in their lifestyle because I don't want to say it like this, but like I technically get rewarded for that yeah, for sure. doing that. Right. Yeah. So but it's a characteristic that is appreciated in that type of community. Yes. Is it is appreciate yes, it is very much appreciated in the lifestyle compared to everywhere. I'm not saying everywhere else isn't appreciated, but it is definitely appreciated more in the lifestyle. That's awesome. Um, what have you learned sexually in the lifestyle? Um, what have I learned sexually? Hmm. I don't know if I've learned anything sexually. Uh, I know that I guess the ladies like me. That's that's the best <laughs> I can give you. You know what I mean? Like I, I found that that well, what I, a wonderful I'm, lesson to learn. <laughs> that I found that I am liked. I guess I'm spoken about. I keep hearing that. My name is going around. <laughs> oh, that's for, awesome. For more than bartending. Ooh. And I was just like, all right, cool. You know, I guess. So, you know. Nice. That's nice. awesome. 
And I'm I, not trying to be, a, I'm not trying to brag or nothing like that either. No, no, I don't no, want no. people to be like, listen to this and be like, oh, who does this guy think he is? And I'm just like, look, I'm just a regular dude. He's Cedric. <laughs> it, it was, yeah, he, he, he's Cedric. He's Professor, Professor Winchester. <laughs> That's who he is. <laughs> the first. The first. Uh, no, that was, uh, I, I mean, I think, like, how fulfilling can that be, though? Because I, uh, when my relationship ended with my first wife, and I went on uh, just a streak of trying to conquer all the <laughs> mountains I could, plant all the flags I could in yeah. the, all the new terrain I could possibly find. Yeah. And it was just, it was a matter of, like, fulfilling myself and, and being like, no, I am desirable. I don't know why she didn't want to have sex with yeah, me. you got to validate that, especially when you have had um, a relationship that maybe ended in poor taste, you know, or, like, you start questioning yourself. Am yeah. I desirable? Am, am I desirable? I, you know, so I get that. I yeah. could totally get that. Yeah. What is something you still hope for? Like, you're like, this type of situation would be really fun. This is, um, this is something I wouldn't mind being invited to. You asking me what my fantasy is? Like, sure. <laughs> Not so <laughs> many words. To out, like, how you try to say this? Because <laughs> um, I've, done, I've done a lot in the lifestyle since I've been a part of it. Um, a lot of things that I didn't expect that I would get a chance to do. Um do, are you willing to list any of those? Um, I've had a few threesomes. I had one foursome. Me and three ladies. Um, there you go. Hey. It was <laughs> it was a surprise to me because it wasn't supposed to be three ladies, but it ended up being three ladies, and uh, it was a good time. Some surprises in life are good. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> but they 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 have fun, so that's all that really matters to me. Um, yeah. Oh, I guess I know what I learned. I could tell you that one, so I have to go back. I learned that I, I have a, what is it, compersion, I believe is what it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. Where, where it's like, I have a willingness to please. Mm-hmm. So, um, I would probably have to say that that's what I learned um, most. As far as fantasies left, because <laughs> I have a lot that I have checked off. Fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot that's just checked out. I was like, oh, I did that, I did that, I did that. Within two short years. I love it. <laughs> it's so great. Um, so I've been talking about free use. I don't know if you guys know much about that. But that free is. use? Yes. So okay. I would like a uh, a lady to hang out with me maybe a day or so and allow free use with her. Oh, okay. So that's more of a lifestyle word than like polyamory word. So it's like, I would say, is it like mid ground between lifestyle and polyamory? So you have like a whole day instead of like a party or one night kind yeah. of thing. And, gotcha. and it would just be me and her and we could do whatever. Go on at, a date, hang out. Point. Yeah. It wouldn't even be necessarily date. So the, the thing about free use is that um, I'm allowed to have sex with her at any point. Gotcha. So, so you're not checking in every single time. Mm, yeah, gotcha. Okay. But it's a whole day. Yeah. That's cool. I'm learning new. At first, I was like, when you said free use, I was like, I, you guys would go like golf, maybe, and then like <laughs> golf. Yeah, I don't know, like go, you know, and then like come home and watch a movie. And I was like, <laughs> this just sounds like dating. No, that's, I, just, that's just hanging out. Yeah, I, was I can like, do that anytime. <laughs> okay, now I get it. Okay, so so like just basically that's sort of like a kitchen pass from from her partner that just says that, like, yeah, man, I trust you. You guys have fun. It, well, yours it could, for the day. Yeah, it could be uh, someone who's coupled, or so it speak. could be um, a, a single lady, whomever, mm. whoever. But the objective of it is that they allow me to have sex with them whenever I want. Oh, okay. So now it's not like a group decision. It's I'm ready. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then and it'll be like a blanket. Who doesn't want that? Honestly, like when I'm ready, you're ready. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Just for a day, 24 hour period. Yeah. And it would be a consensual situation, you know what I mean? But it would be, <laughs> yeah. it would be a nice little. That's nice cool. Little That's cool. Free use. We should get a t-shirt. <laughs> we'll get you a t-shirt. You just let us know when you got that. Yeah, You're yeah. like, I got my milestone hit, of free use. I hit that. Check, I can check dig that it. one off the box. Salty sex cast t-shirt. Free use. Free, free use. use. Yep. All right. Love it. I'll buy one. Oh, no, you're going to earn that. We'll give that oh, to you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just got to find a willing participant. Yeah. So I got I, I to ask, do, is there, um, so, I mean, the last time I was exposed to uh, parties like this in, like, uh, American culture, it was in a movie, which was uh, The Watch, I think. 
And uh, there was like a running joke about how many batteries the neighbor was buying. And it turned out that he was buying them for sex parties. For He had a table full of batteries and sex toys. Okay. Well, now all the sex toys are rechargeable. They don't oh, take batteries. Yeah, that kind of ruins everything. That it ruins does. my whole question. It does. I'm I was, sorry. Wait, well, I want to know what the question is. I was just going to ask what your, what your thoughts were on like the the whoever was hosting the party and their battery budget. <laughs> Their condom I budget, maybe? What's going on. I personally enjoy going to parties and people have toys and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I saw, I was at a party. Accessories. There's yeah. sex accessories. The guy came <laughs> in and he had a whole bunch of spanking stuff. Oh, okay. Floggers and other things. Yeah, but it wasn't like he had baseball bats and. And like he had a canes and someone has a spank like kink. a fire hose thing. Uh, oh shit! And okay, he was just and he he does a scene with a girl and I was just like, whoa! That was actually really cool to see. That's really yeah, cool. And then you're like blown away at like how tough some of those people oh can be. God. And then like I mean, he had brass knuckles. And he was yeah. And so like I've I've participated as a as a dom yeah. and uh, like uh, Jamie when she found out about it was like the fuck. And I was like, she's like, do your fucking teddy bear. And I was like, yeah, but I was asked. And yeah, so I, yeah, they asked. I put a lot of effort into figuring out a way to do this. And it was hard. And I'm not generally a mean person. But, uh, you know, I did it for them. Yeah. Compersion. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was kind of one of those things that uh, it's funny because, like, I feel like all the, all the employees at the Cal Ranch know I'm not buying that riding crop for a horse. <laughs> 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 I get a look every time. <laughs> it's what you buy with it is what's setting the the alarm off. The leather gloves and zip ties and rock salt. Mm -hmm. you know. That black duct tape that you just pulled out of nowhere. I was like, where did that come from? I, I've never used the black duct tape. It's over there. It's the not very strong. You got to use real gaffer's tape. <laughs> So what what are some of the the things that you saw at those parties that you were like, you know, I am cool to just be a visual participant and not actually wanting to participate on something well, that, like this. That spanking scene was one of them. Okay. I was like, okay, I'm good to watch that one. However, at another party, apparently I'm a natural at flogging. <laughs> I didn't There's know this. There's a natural this. skill. It's in the wrist, is it? I'm just kidding. No, I have no uh, clue. Uh, okay. I figured out why I'm a natural at flogging. Well, when I was younger, I did martial arts. So oh. I used nunchucks. Okay. So if you can spin oh. nunchucks, yeah. you can properly flog. And not whip yourself in the eye, Brady. That's, that was not a, <laughs> I, was, I was not using a flogger when that happened. No, you were <laughs> using an actual whip. Yeah. Oh, my God. You whipped yourself in the eye. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, it was a, like, Indiana Jones toy whip. Oh, okay. So I didn't really do any. My real whip, I've never used for. Yeah, I've, like, heard you, like, you were trying to crack oh, it. Oh, I hit myself in the back fat when we did our uh, salt flats. Yeah. Yeah, I got myself right in the love handle. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, okay. So when I was learning how to use nunchucks, that's what I, that's what happened to me. Well, I, I cracked myself in the head and. I sure. was probably spinning more them. than once, right? I was spinning them, and then it, the piece comes up, and I am looking at it, and I know that I cannot move before it hits me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, hits me right in the skull. I fall oh. over, and I'm just like, oh. But, you know, I kept trying. Last time and now I, I can flog. Now you can flog. <laughs> All right. Last time I got yelled at by Jamie, it was because I was using the, uh, the whip. Abby found the whip while we were at the nudist resort. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll crack it for you. So I went out there and cracked it, and she's like, Brady! Not in the nude. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's seen me. She's seen me hit myself with it, and I usually get myself in the in the back and the love handle. Yeah, I can see that because how it like comes yeah. back around doesn't. Yeah. That makes a crazy sound. I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. That was one of those things I saw at a party. Somebody was doing that. I was like, oh, that's crazy. I'm gonna stay away from that though. That's not for me. <laughs> I, I'm out. I generally do not use the subsonic or the the. You know, when you hear that crack, it's the end of the whip is breaking the sound barrier. That's why it pops like that. I do not use that motion when I use a whip for BDSM because that's that sounds. Yeah. I feel like that's a way to like cleave flesh. I was gonna say that'll break skin. It, yeah, it's, yeah, and it's I'm not, really just like an intimidation noise, kind of like sure. ooh, yeah, like get that excitement, like yeah, yeah. I could see that, but I don't know. Look, I just stay away from it. It's not my thing. I'm yeah, like, cool. well, everyone has their thing, and it's not like you're yucking someone else's yum. You're just like, no, nah, I'm good to just 
watch you do you kind of thing. But is there anything else that you were like, I never thought I'd see that in real life. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of those actually, (laughs) but it's like hard to like pick one because (laughs) like, I never thought I'd be in a place where there's a dungeon and like sex things are happening inside a dungeon and like legit dungeon shit is happening inside of a dungeon. I was like, I never thought I'd be the part of that. Like, did the architecture blow your way? I mean, like, was it like, <laughs> I, I mean, it didn't look like a living room with like black sheets hung. It was no, like no. brick wall. This was like shackles made of iron. giant like cold storage space. No shit. That was kind of turned dungeon style. That's really cool. Wow. And it was like bolts in the floor. It was crazy. They had fucking chains on the the, <laughs> the post and all kinds of stuff. Just like one bed in the middle. It was it was crazy. Like, it was a crazy scene that I saw. And, and not I a comfortable like, bed, right? Yeah. Well, you're not there well, for comfort. There was a lot of things not happening in, my in the dungeon. bed. I don't think they cared if it was comfortable. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the things that were happening there. Um, I don't, I, now I want to build a stock. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Shut your mouth, Brady. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> build a stockade. That's great. Um, oh man, I've been... Being a part of some gangbangs and I don't know, just a lot of different things that I've seen. Glory hole. So like, I haven't done, I haven't done that. Or like the mystery box. I don't know. You don't know who the people. Like the mystery, like someone else is on the other wall. You don't know who it is, but you're still playing with their genitals. Hmm. Anyway, it's just the porn I watch. I got never met. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> All right, she got me beat on well, that. Well, when one. you guys are invited to my dungeon, uh, there, there will be a mystery box. <laughs> oh, every every, every Mariah branded there. dungeon has a mystery box. Oh, okay. All right, Mariah branded. So you like franchise these out? Like you got? Yeah, she's got a whole, whole contracting. So you're like the McDonald's of dungeons. All of our patrons <laughs> get, get, get a mystery box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, so what? Uh, God, I had a question just a second ago. I'm no, so I I sorry. Lost it. My mystery box. <laughs> <laughs> so distracting. Every Do you time we know talk what's about in my mystery your... box. <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. I gotta pee a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would be your 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 big piece of advice to somebody who's new, and maybe a single male? What would be the number one piece of advice you would say if, if you're going to be successful uh, interacting with this group of people, this is this is going to be the one thing that will probably help you? Hmm. The one number one piece of advice I would give is to, well, clearly consent. That's number one. That is definitely number one. However, along with that is to learn the rules. Learn the rules of each person. Learn the rules of each couple. Know the rules of each party. Mm-hmm. Because if you know the rules and you play within the rules, you don't really... Everyone has fun. Everybody has a good time. Yeah. You don't get kicked out. You don't... You know what I mean? Know the rules. And I mean... And it's, th- it's three levels deep. It's not, it's not just know the rules of the party and you're good. Know the rules of the party. Know the rules of the couple know the rules of the person and yourself listen to your intuition too because i'm sure there's times where you're like i'm intrigued but is this crossing my boundary and you have to tune into your own needs too is it just because of the atmosphere and everyone's doing kind of crazy things so you're like i'm willing to do it and then afterwards you're like "Eh, that's probably not me probably shouldn't have done that yeah Yeah. we've probably all been there but um i think that's really cool yeah think of all that they're layers deep Mm -hmm. it's a really smart observation because i I had to really, when, when Jamie was like, oh yeah, like fooling around with girls and like we could do a threesome. And then it became possible. We met somebody. I was like, fuck, I don't know what I'm capable of or what I'm willing. And I was like, what? <laughs> and uh, threesomes are interesting like that. <laughs> yeah. And it was, I mean, and then I was terrified too, you know, like as things started going and I kind of fool around with the other person, I kept like, you know, I'm, I'm sure I looked like a prairie dog. I kept <laughs> popping my head up and like checking. I was like, we cool? We're good. You're not mad. Okay. You're still here. You know, with, with my, with Jamie, because I was like, I don't, you know, I was terrified of like her. Like the thumbs up. Like we good. Some to the side. Not yeah. so certain. Nope. Out. Oh, we're out. We'll it was more, it. Yeah. It was no. more of a look. And I was just like, oh, she didn't leave. She's not hitting me. <laughs> She's so we're here. good. That is something I feel like with lifestyle, 
couples have a really good unspoken language. You'll know immediately. They don't have to actually say something to each other. They could probably have a look or like even a sign or even a vibe. Like it's really interesting. So I love that you talk to both of them and, you know, want to know because one person could be totally cool, but the other one isn't. Mm -hmm. And then what if the sign got misconstrued? I've mm-hmm. had that, you yeah. know, speaking to a lady, and I was like, all right, we, you know, you want, she's like, all right, let me talk to my husband. She, you know, talks to her husband, and he was like, no, he's like, no, can you? all right, that's fine. Cool, not man. Really, that's not what's really so a cool. big deal about make a drink, that. But no one gets upset you, with no's either. Yeah. Exactly. That and is so long I've as never, you know the rules. Yeah. And you play within the rules, you, you'll be fine. I would say the best type of parties to go to are the, some of those meet and greets. Everyone's so kind, so respectful. They know their boundaries and it's not predatorial like you think it would be. Like, oh no, it's this meet and greet. Everyone's like, it's a meat market. It's not at all. No. no. It is the chillest vibe ever. People are so happy to like intermingle and just get to know one another because that is baked into that type of culture. You have to have respect to have a fun time. So you have to have, you know, and so just when there's no pressure of like performance at a meet and greet type party. It's just fun to go hang out. So if you're a single person, you want to go to a bar or something or whatever and just get out, that's a really good place to go. Or even a couple who's like, we're new here. We don't know anyone. Yeah. You get the best friends there. I think like because there's no performance pressure just because you're here, you have to do something. Right. So. Well, it, it's it's uh, I think it, there are a ton of common misconceptions about things like this. And like one of the things I tell people that have asked me questions about uh, going to the clothing optional resorts. I get more eye contact there than I do in any other conversation I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and it's, it's not uh, it's, it's a respect thing. And I, and I, and I feel like when you, when you uh, interact with, uh, you know, lifestyle type individuals or, or couples or groups, uh, respect is like baked in. Yeah. And, and it's it's meant to be a positive thing. Like heightened. And yeah. communication is just heightened it, in those types of built groups. In. Polyamory and mm-hmm. lifestyle, I feel like it really is. It's like, I'd rather hang out there than yeah. some of the other just random bars on yep. things because of just the yeah. culture. And the people so that, cool. are, that are still in it, that have been doing it for a while, they've stumbled and made some mistakes and learned and, and have learned. developed. Or if not, they would have been kicked out and like kind of like the group kind of agrees you're not cool we don't like you <laughs> kind of exiled from yeah it, yeah kind of it happens so, it happens quick you Good. must leave the island you are the winkest link <laughs> goodbye <laughs> <laughs> um anything else that's worthy to tell our audience um as far as like lifestyle stuff anything you want to say um how do we find you if we want you to be a bartender well right now i do most of my stuff through facebook so it's just my facebook with my name cedric winchester jr you can find me there i'm holding two bottles oh so professor winchester the <laughs> second yes, yes <laughs> <that's your name. laughs> please change your name no, I, know, right? I gotta change to professor winchester yeah that's gonna happen at some point i i guarantee you um right now my little my little th- fledgling little company is uh drinks drinks in color mm-hmm. that's why my drinks come out with cool colors like that oh brilliant um and I'm setting up a website, Instagram page, all that good stuff. I'll have that stuff. Probably if we do a part two or something like that, oh, yeah. I'll come back and I'll have all that good stuff. But right now, you can just find me on Facebook. You can contact me there and uh, just send me a message. Say, hey, man, I heard you on the podcast. I want to pick you up for bartending. I have some other cool drinks, man. I have uh, the peanut butter and jelly that I did. I have a watermelon mm-hmm. surprise. I have a, a pink starburst that I do. Um, a dreamsicle that I have mm-hmm. that's really good. Um, and for the most part, if you got alcohol, I can make you a cool drink out of it. What's your, what's your, 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 uh, normal area of operation? Northern um, Utah. Like how far Northern do you go? Utah. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming if someone's willing to pay, you'd fly to Dubai to bartend, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, they have to pay for the ticket too. Yeah. 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 Other than that. Yeah. I fly. Yeah. Like, yeah but I mean, not. I mean, you're, you're, you're just your average services from where to where you think. Uh, Utah. I've bartended all the way down into like. Saratoga, Saratoga Springs. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's a good guys, job. If you guys want a bartender, hit me up. Yeah. I'll come through and uh, we'll discuss pricing. Because, um, I mean, each party's different. Some parties are very small, so they don't need as much. So sure. then they don't get charged as much. Some parties are really big. Like I did a wedding last night. Um, 
So they got charged more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. Hours and am I participant in this party too, or am I or, just or my staff? <laughs> yeah, staff. <laughs> I love how you say that. Well, I I set it up to where I bartend for a certain number of hours, mm -hmm. so that way I can then participate in the party. Smart. So that, so that way that way I'm not just staff. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Totally. Yeah, I love that. Super fun. Thank you so much for coming on talking about this and really shining a light on probably so many people, again, outside looking in. They don't know what's going on. They expect something. They have this vision in their mind that could be very, very wrong. So get curious. Fucking calibrate your shit. Get calibrated. And, and be respectful. Exactly. Be, be willing to learn and adjust to the culture of that group and the culture of each couple. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, you have to do that. Individual. You have to do that anyway with everybody else. Mm -hmm. I friends. couldn't come to Utah and just be like, oh, I hate the Mormons and not understand it as somewhat. You know Maybe what I mean? You can't I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I had to learn and understand Mormon culture and then like flow with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have to be a Mormon. But I have to understand what it is and flow with it. Mm -hmm. The same thing works with, with with lifestyle swingers, kink. You have to know, learn the culture, and then flow with the culture. Don't just don't go against the tide. Yeah, because you know nothing of it either. Also, don't knock it till you are aware of it. You don't have to try it, but just educate your fucking self, please. So thanks for tuning into the podcast to educate yourself. Um, you can find all of our stuff at thesaltysexcast.com. We're on all listening platforms that are worthy of your time, plus YouTube. And if you find uh, one of the cards I've been sticking in the gas pumps around Salt Lake City, <laughs> send us a picture on Instagram or Twitter or our email. And we'll send you a t-shirt. Yeah, I'm down. I'll pay for that t-shirt. Deal. Yeah. Dig mm -hmm. it. I've all right. Every gas station I stopped at in the last, like, three weeks, I put a card in a gas pump. A Salty Sex Cast sticker. Oh, no, these are, like, business cards you gave me. Oh, they're the cards? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. I cool, save the cool. stickers for other things. Oh, all right. <laughs> like porta potties. <laughs> I do every porta potty I've ever stuff. Ah, oh, hmm? we should I'm get assuming some. nipples. That's what you're saving the stickers. Oh, for. we should make salty sex cast pasties. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Done. Little SS. Yeah. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> all right. Well, catch us next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to the salty sex cast. Ready for round two? Find us on Facebook.